Hi there. I only uh, realized after my first recording that I, even though I said where I'm from, that I never properly introduced myself. My name is James Mueller. Uh, Mueller is actually pronounced Miller. Um, I'm originally from South Africa, but I've been living in and working in the UK for almost seven years now. Now, I wasn't sure if I wanted to make this clip, but then I thought to myself that if there's only one person out there whose life I can touch or to whom's life I can make a difference, then it would make it all worthwhile. And although I wish not to go into too much detail, I myself was a victim of sexual abuse when I was much younger by men. Now, it's something that I don't remind myself of often, but I realize that I do have a story to tell and a very positive one at that. It's, uh, it's an uplifting story, and, uh, but I would like to start this clip with a poem from Derek Elscott. It's called Love After Love. The time will come when with elation you will greet yourself standing at your own door, in your own mirror, and each will smile at the other's welcome and say, sit here, eat. You will love again the stranger who was yourself. Give wine, give bread, give back your heart to itself, the stranger who has loved you all your life, whom you ignored for another, who knows you by heart. Take down the love letters from the bookshelf, the photographs, the desperate notes. Peel your own image from the mirror. Sit, feast on your life. When I heard the poem for the very first time, it struck a chord with me. It just really resonated with me. And I thought, how true. Things that we cannot always control in our lives happen and it shapes the way that we look and see things. Unfortunately for me, my life involved the story of abuse and what I could not comprehend even as I grew older is that I would still attract abusive people into my life. Even in my early 20s, abusive older men would still try and lure me into their web of deceit and, and destructiveness. The sorry part of it all was the fact that I always felt to blame, that I believed that I was the reason why this was happening. This was a story I kept telling myself, never realizing that I was wrong, that this was not my problem, but that this was solely their problem, as these people did not think twice about the impact and the repercussions this had on my life. What I remember most is the conflict I had with myself, the not accepting, the not loving myself, the feeling that this must be me. I felt like a magnet, but for all the wrong reasons. I remember when I moved to the UK that I hated the mirror image of myself so much that I would get annoyed with my friends taking photos of me and that I would avoid the reflection of me. I would even, at several times, call my mum in tears saying that I did not know how to accept myself, that I hated everything about myself. I was at one point even contemplating plastic surgery just to change my appearance. I just didn't want to look like me or at me. And yet, to the outside world and to my friends, I portrayed a very different image, a very self-confident image, and the truth was, I had none. I didn't want to be me. And then, at one point, when my brother, a couple of years ago, lost his foot in, a, in an accident in a small town called Roscoe in South Dakota, in America, I remember I went over to be with him. And I spent about two and a half months with him at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester. And there I saw many broken people, so to speak, 
people, soldiers that had lost limbs, uh, diabetics that had amputations, people dying or suffering from cancer. And everything kind of came full circle in my life. It was like the breaking down had, had reached full circle. The breaking down for me started years ago. It, st it started with the abuse. It started with when I lost my brother in a car accident, when I burned with petrol as, meant, as mentioned previously, and when my family lost everything. But the breaking of me was, was actually leading to something, something else. It was leading me to a different understanding of people and their heartache. It was creating within me a more compassionate and a more loving heart. It taught me of forgiveness. It taught me of acceptance. It taught me of real joy within myself. Joy rising. I think there comes a time in your life when you are so broken that nothing else matters. Nothing else affects. And I remember distinctively one night in Roscoe, I was lying outside in the evening on the bare ground with my face to the ground and I was crying. I was crying for my brother's pain and his loss. I was crying for the heartache that my mom and dad had to endure. And I was crying for me, for the little boy inside of me that, that still didn't know any better, that still didn't understand all of the wrongdoing. But something remarkable happened. Love is the strongest force in the world and love call it god call it whatever you choose to lifted me out of that pain and slowly the wounds started to heal and the broken mirror with the skewed reflection of myself was replaced by a wholesome beautiful image of a young man that wanted better that wanted to love that wanted to make a difference and that wanted to truly live I wanted to stop living my life in auto mode. I wanted to be in the moment. I wanted to feel alive, be the complete essence of me. I always knew that I was stronger than my circumstances. And I always knew that I was stronger than the emotional and physical abuse. In my heart, I always felt and knew that. But what I'm trying to say is that even though this is a part of my life. It most, is, it most certainly isn't the story of my life. And this will never be the story of my life that I tell myself. It is rather a story of empowerment. My past doesn't define me. The mistakes that I made doesn't define me. It rather speaks of a better understanding and more wisdom to know better. I decided to change it into a positive. My story is a story of triumph, of love, of self-acceptance and of incredible joy. Whatever the story of your life is and however bad it might be, it doesn't have to define you or your life. I would like you to know that you are more than that, that you are special that you are loved, that there is only one of you. And don't let life pass you by. Don't, do not focus on the negative. Focus on the power and the love within you. Be in the moment. Ask yourself, what is the story you are telling about yourself? Experience the beauty of life. As I said in my previous clip, let go of what you need to let go of and see the beauty of each day for what it is. Live life to the max. You know, there's a, a saying that says that unforgiveness is uh, holding on to the past, thinking that it, that it could be any different. Sometimes, sometimes in life, you just really need to let go. Look forward. I, I thank you for taking the time to listen to what I have to say. It is truly appreciated. And wherever you are and whatever you're doing, be in the moment. Be in the moment as to where you are experiencing and enjoying that which life is offering you. I thank you. It is once again much appreciated.
Much, much love and take care.